Welcome back. Today we are going to be doing some data modeling, all right? Logarithmic function context and putting these things into some context and some data modeling. It's from one of my favorite movies it's called Zoolander where they're models and they just make fun of them so bad. But he always got always so hot right now. Um, it's just funny. So data modeling, so hot right now. Let's talk about it. Well, um, to do this, let's start a little bit simpler. All right, let's remember that logarithmic functions have independent values that increase proportionally and dependent values that increase at a constant rate. So here is a constant rate. This is increasing by 2 every time. That's a constant rate. This is increasing at a proportion of 3. I'm multiplying by a factor of 3, right? And the great thing about this is this proportional right here would be our base if we were to um, find the equation of this line, all right? So imagine be, if imagine they were switched and this is the dependent and this is the independent, then that would be three to some variable to get these solutions. That's how it would work. In fact, this one would be x minus three over two, x minus three over two to get that. That would be our equation. So if we we're gonna do the inverse or find the log of that, we would have to actually have a log base three, all right? So that's what this is talking about. The proportional increase is actually going to be the base. Now here's the tricky thing. We're going to use our calculators to find our regression. And the tricky thing about that is you can't actually find specific bases of your regression. All right. It may be obvious to you what the base should be. Like this one is pretty obvious. It may not be very obvious. But the calculator will do regression in terms of natural log only. All right, so we're going to talk about that in just a second. So get those calculators ready. All right, let's look at this first example. So this is the end of the school year. The classroom gets really warm. I don't know about you. Hopefully you have air conditioning. We do not. As the number of students in the room increases, so does the temperature. Mr. Bean took some data from last May. So he has the number of students in the room, and then he mo modeled the temperature. Now, one of the things we need to remember is, is this logarithmic? We cannot, you know, necessarily definitely tell every time, but this data is pretty obvious that this is proportionally going up by 2. We're multiplying by 2. And this is more of a constant rate, correct? Not all of them are going to be that obvious, okay? But when the dependent is going up at a more consistent rate, more, more constant rate, and the independent is what's going up quicker, proportionally probably quicker, then it's pretty easy to guess that it's going to be a logarithmic. Now, we're going to put that into our calculator. Hopefully by now you're getting pretty good at these regressions, right? So let's take a look here. We have, um, we're going to go to stat. Of course, we have to edit. And in L1, we're putting our list of X, our number of students. So I'm going to put 2, enter, 4, enter, 8, Enter and 16, enter. Hopefully you are becoming a whiz with regression. My Y values are going to be 67, 69, 71, and 73. All right, now we're saying this is re, uh, going to be modeled by a logarithmic regression. Of course, obviously we're doing logarithms. It makes sense, but why, when in the middle of an AP test, would you know that? Again, this goes up proportionally, or goes up a little bit faster each time. This goes up at a more consistent or constant rate. That's a dead giveaway that it's going to be a logarithmic. All right, so let's go calculate that. We have to go back to stat, and now we're going to calculate it right here. I'm going to go over to calculate. So we're looking for the logarithmic. Now, as I told you, your choices are, are slim here, all right? Logistic is not logarithmic, but this one right here, number nine on my calculator, LN, natural log regression. That's what we're going to do. All right, so I need to double check. L1 was my X's, L2 was my Y's. I always like to store my regression equation, even if I'm not going to use it, but I always like to store it, and I'll show you why in a minute. To store it, I'm going to go to variables right here. I'm going to go to my Y variables. It's a function. And I'm going to put it into Y1, and then we're going to calculate it. So our equation is going to be A, which is 65, plus 
I'm going to round that to 9 natural log of x. So here we go. Let's write that down. f of x, woo, f of x equals 65 plus 2.89 natural log of x. All right. So then it says, remember, these are our x's. These are our f of x's. So in this equation, what's the temperature if there are 35 students? That is an x value. Now, here's a great thing. I stored this one, all right? I know I'm going to put 35 right in here. I know that my equation is going to be f of 35 equals 65 plus 2.89 times the natural log of 35. You can do that one step at a time if you want, but because you stored your equation, you can go right here, all right? I can go to 35 this way. That's one way I could do it. I could go back to my variables. Let me quit this. I could go to my variables, and I could do this little trick right here. I'm going to put it in function notation right here. Y1 of 35. And that is going to give me 75.26. 75.26. So F of 35 equals 75.26 degrees. Whew. That's getting humid. All right. How many students are there when the temperatures reach it? So this is my f of x. So now I'm going to have to solve this. So let's solve this. So I have 85 equals 65 plus 2.89 natural log of x. I don't know how many students. First thing I need to do is subtract 65. So I have 20 equals 2.89 times the natural log of x. Now I'm going to do something a little bit, maybe something you don't like. I'm going to divide this, but I'm not going to actually divide it out. All right, and then how do I get rid of the natural log? I have to raise it to the power, or e to that power, because those are the same. They're going to cancel. So now I have x equals, so I have e to the 20 over 2.89. And the reason I did this, now I can put that in right here. I don't have to round it. The less you round, the better. The less you round, the better. So I got 1,012.74 students, or let's say 100, uh, 1,013 students. So luckily for me, I'm not going to have that situation, so I won't have to get to 85 degrees, all right? All right, I want you to try this one all on your own, all right? See what you can do. So pause the video, find your regression equation, and go for it. All right, let's take a look. So the regression equation I came up with was m of t equal 283.47 minus 62.25 natural log of x. Now, another great thing about um, storing this equation in your calculator is it, it doesn't round it when you store it, all right? If, if you need to round, I generally do two decimal places. I think it's a little bit safer than one. But the key here is you want to try to round as least amount as possible. And here's why. So how long will it take till it gets to 70 degrees? I plug 70 in for x. I did this. I used rounding, right? I got 18.96. Is it vastly different than when I just plug it in to my calculator? In my calculator, I got 19.02 minutes. Not really any different, right? It's, it's about 19 minutes. It's, that's how long it's going to take. But I just want to show you the value of rounding there. Like, try to round and wait until the end. This is my favorite mistake. I see it all the time. Did all this really good work over here. And I even checked it, and I was like, hey, man, 18.96, that's really close to... My calculator version of 19.01. That's just so close. But then uh, you realize you made a mistake. And you did 0.47. But down here you put 0.43. Typo. It's my favorite mistake a kid makes. And why is it my favorite mistake a kid makes? Well, it's my favorite mistake. Because they do all the work right. And they can't figure out why they get it wrong. And they just struggle with it. But they know what they're doing. They just made a, co uh, you know, a copy mistake. And that's what I did here. So if I actually did 70 with my equation over here, I would have got 19. Now, again, something I want to point out, it is always better to not round until the end. And I rounded throughout here. Really, really is not a great way to do this. I would always round at the very end or not round at all. Use my calculator function. 
all right? Plug that in, do y is 70, find it, and then round in here. So 19.0198. I would even round this to 19.020. Remember, pre-calc test, three decimals. All right, down here we have a situation now where we are talking about decibels and the intensity of sounds. And people measure loudness in terms of decibels, hopefully you knew that, using the following function, where D of I right here is the decibel level, I is the intensity of the sound, and this right here, 10 to the negative 12, that is the quietest sound a human can hear. Ooh, very quiet, okay? So this is the formula here. Well, it says, what is the intensity of the sound of a school fire alarm if it registers as 100 decibels? So D of I is going to be 100, all right? And it's going to equal 10 log of I, the intensity of the sound, over 10 to the negative 12, which is the quietest sound we can hear. So to solve this, I'm going to divide by 10. So 100 divided by 10 is 10 equals log of I over 10 to the negative 12. This is a common log, so I can raise both sides to 10 to the power, uh, or t base 10, excuse me. I'm going to leave this here. 10 to the 10th equals now all of this is gone, and I have I divided by 10 to the negative 12th. The opposite of dividing by 10 to the negative 12th is multiplying, so now I have 10 to the negative 12th times 10 to the 10th equals i. If you remember your exponent rules, when I have the same base, I add the exponents. So that's 10 to the negative second, which is the intensity, or 0 0.01 would be the intensity of that fire alarm. So 10 to the negative second, 10 to the negative 12th, quite a bit more intense. I know it sounds like a small number, but it is quite a magnitude more of 10 to the negative 12th and 10 to the negative second, right? It's quite louder. All right. So, I want you to pause the video and try this one. Worst case scenario, you know, put what you can in the formula. I really think you can do more than that, but let's start with that one. This talks about um, interest and things like that. Very important topic. All right, Mr. Bruss wants to save for a new Lamborghini. He currently has $50,000. That's called principal. Principal is what we start with when we're investing, all right? In an account that pays interest continuously, that's why we're using the PERT formula. That means continuously compounded. And he'll need to save $300,000 in total for that Lamborghini. Keep on dreaming, Mr. Bust. All right, if he saves money for 12 years, that's our time, our T value, what interest rate would he need to achieve his goal? So how much does this rate need to be so that he can actually get to $300,000 dollars just starting with fifty thousand dollars after 12 years well let's see all right we plugged it in the first thing i divided to do was i divided by fifty thousand that gave me six to get rid of this e to the power of 12 r i took the natural log of both sides that gave me the natural log of six equals 12 r i divided by 12 and i got 0.149 which really means he would need a interest rate of 14.9 percent and that ain't going to happen, probably. So good luck getting that Lamborghini. Maybe if you found some really good stocks and bonds, but I don't see that happening. All right. Hopefully what I do see happening is you guys doing well on this, asking for lots of help, and asking your teacher or fellow students, learning as much as you possibly can, and uh, moving on to the next thing. As always, do your best, and uh, keep, keep at it. Dream big. Talk to you next time. Bye.